Good evening, folks. Uh, we're here with ZM Wise, assistant editor and co owner of Transcendent Zero Press, assistant editor of Harbinger Asylum, Houston's own literary magazine, and author of the recent publication book. Uh, it's called Take Me Back Kingswood Clock. We have him here available for commentary and an interview. Uh, Mr. ZM, I would like to ask you, first of all, what is the meaning of this book, Take Me Back, Kingswood Clock? What does the title tell you? The, uh, <clears throat> the title is, is derived from uh, the street I used to live on, Kingswood Lane. Growing up, I used to live in Chicago, Illinois, well, Wheeling, Illinois, rather, about 20, 25 minutes away from Chicago. And... Um, it just represents childhood, uh, uh, reminiscing, uh, growing up, adolescence, everything you experience up till adulthood. And uh, take me back, Kingswood Clock uh, also means it's, I'm not going to lie, I, I miss my hometown very much. And um, uh, the idea for the cover came uh, from this picture that I sent to the publisher, Mavlet. And um, it was a picture of my... Uh, sort of turned it into this sign that was in the city and I told them to add a clock as well for good measure posterity so um, I, I've read the book and I noticed there's a variety of uh, m levels of um, maturity like there's kind of a young a young man looking you know inward as a child and then there's themes of kind of adolescent things like werewolves, vampires, things of that nature. Uh, are you trying to make a statement there, or are you just trying to kind of revisit uh, through your poetry, kind of revisit your childhood? It's a bit of both, actually. Um, as far as, you know, monsters and, you know, Greek mythology, uh, you know, werewolves, I've been into all of that since the age of five when I was exposed to the old classic uh, Universal Monsters and even before then, you know, Nosferatu, Phantom of the Opera, and I was, I was simply um, just dazzled by it. And, um, and then, uh, as, uh, at the same time though, the statement, um, it's really not a specific statement, it's just, it's, it's all here, just explaining about uh, childhood and what, what is real, what isn't. Uh, a lot of people say that they don't really understand what's going on in my mind when I'm writing, uh, whether it's this book or individual published poems that have been posted in, uh, in numerous uh, journals and magazines, anthologies. They say they don't understand my mind and I'm glad. I'd like to keep it that way, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I don't really let anybody in, <laughs> and and but, but that's the way I like it. You know, if you know, if if I told everybody if, uh, the meaning of a certain poem, or if I told them, you know, what what I'm thinking, you know, they're just if they just figure me out, you know, it's you know, it, it's not as exciting anymore. You know? Have you had a chance to bring these poems to life on the stage and the ones contained in Take Me Back, Kingswood Clock? Have you actually read these to an audience or performed them, and how did that turn out? Uh, a couple of times. Um, the very first time I did it, um, I was at Barnes & Noble, and um, I had sort of an Elvis Costello moment. I was reading a uh, romantic poem. I was about to, rather, and the poem is called Her Hair. And... Um, and something inside me said, no, you know what, this, sh this shouldn't be read here. So I sort of changed it. Uh, I, uh, d not changed it, rather I just picked a different poem um, and, uh, and just went with that. It was a more universal theme. Uh, I, I thought I had a pretty decent reception. I'm, I favor my later work a bit more than my, my early work, but I, I'm, I'm really happy with the way it has turned out, and uh, I also performed uh, a couple of poems from this book, and actually read her hair at uh, Coffee Oasis when that still existed, and um, so it, it was. A, I thought I had a pretty decent uh, reception from that as well. Do you uh, think there is a reason behind the? more related aspect like you you relate stronger to your newest poems now 
Uh, do you think, you know, five years from now you'll look upon them as you look upon this book right now? I think so, yes. Um, in the field of the arts, whether it's visual art, uh, written art, um, or you're uh, performing you know, yourself as an actor or whatnot, um, it's progression. It's evolution. It's any way you want it to be. You have the power to uh, have your progression as an escalator, a rising prism, or a downward spiral. Whatever you, whatever you choose. Life is what you make it, in plain and simple terms. And uh, for me, <clears throat> you know, along with any writer, I am my own worst critic. You know, there are dozens of times where I've said, "Oh, I don't, <laughs> can't believe I actually wrote that." You know, I'm, I'm not too crazy about it, but you know. It helps when it, when when the poems are recognized, you know, and um, and some of the pieces where uh, I didn't think I do I, I did that decent of a job on a, a lot of others seem to like it for, uh, fairly well, and um, which is quite surprising, but it helps. So um, it's 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 progression for me, you know. I'm uh, I guess I'm a form of progress. Do you uh, have any reservations or uh, excitement about uh, future events, reading any uh, your new work alongside your, your uh, recent publication? Uh, plenty of events, um, and uh, there's, there's plenty coming up. One of them uh, will, uh, hopefully in this case, uh, be on February 22nd at uh, this place called Bohemios. I will be, um, it's going to be a sort of a book signing and reading along with another well-known poet um, who also originated from the North. Uh, his name is Victor B. Johnson Sr., who is also known as Birdman. And uh, we'll both be signing our books that just recently came out and uh, we'll also be sharing some poems from them as well. Um, <clears throat> it's funny you ask that. I actually met uh, the publisher Matt Litt, uh, through Birdman. Uh, Birdman told him about me, and uh, Matt Litt and I had two of the longest phone conversations ever. I enjoyed every second of it. Um, he asked me to uh, send him some of my work. I did. Uh, he liked them a lot, and he said, you know, let's get a book together. Um, when he told me this, I was, I was in a public place. I was actually waiting for my... Uh, a car to be finished. I was getting an oil change, and uh, I didn't care who was around. I started jumping around like this happy maniac. So you know, um, <laughs> it was it was, a, it was a beautiful moment. But um, you know, I'm gonna keep on uh, publishing books and um, and just getting my words out there because, as I said before in an earlier interview, um, my words are what matter, not me. I I just hold the pen, you know. You know what you what you need to focus on is this, not me. Uh, tell us about your uh, future book uh, coming out, the Wandering Poet. Do you have any uh, kind of uh, words of wisdom in trekking through that book for the reader? Certainly. Um, yeah, the Wandering Poet uh, will be coming out soon this year. <clears throat> um, that will be by uh, Transcendent Zero Press, and. Um, the title I uh, I got from um, it was it was from this uh, recurring character that a few uh, appears in quite a few of my poems and uh, scattered books <laughs> and his name is Jack DeFeo. He um, he is the wandering poet. Um, he's his way of spreading the love for poetry. His message. He uh, he's a nomad. He has no actual home. He just moves from place to place, just spreading the love of poetry enthusiastically with all his might, as if it really is his true love, his soulmate. And, um, I feel I have a bit of uh, Jack DeFeo in me in the sense that, um, you know, poetry is not dead. Poetry lives uh, within all of us. And, you know, and in any way I can, in every way I can, rather, uh, I would, I would love to just spread the word as much as I can, you know, whether it's at a local event or whether it's, uh, 
you and I standing on uh, the, the seawall in Galveston, just uh, reading our poems aloud to random people. You know, uh, it's it's anything like that. Just as long as the message is spread, as long as it, as long as it sinks in their heads, poetry lives. You know. Do you have any final words or advice for writers of the future? One thing I can say is <clears throat> don't force out your pieces ever, uh, no matter what sort of writer you are. Um, I learned that the hard way a couple of times and uh, didn't even look like a poem, just looks like it was just... Uh, um, Pardon me for being explicit, but it's what I call mental constipation. It's just, <laughs> it comes out like that, um, not in here, of course, but um, I, I, it, they call it a natural flow for a reason. You write when you feel it, when you feel a piece coming on. Don't try to write a piece. I mean, for some people, it does work, and I applaud them for that. But, you know, for me, personally, and from what I've experienced from a lot of others, um, if you try to force out a piece, um, it's not going to turn out that great. Um, so just don't force out your pieces. Write when you feel it, in here, and in here too. Um, also, uh, uh, be aware that uh, TZ Press is uh, rapidly growing. Where, uh, an independent publishing press. I'm uh, very honored to be a part of that, as well as Harbinger Asylum, which is doing better than ever now. Got a brand new look, you know, and um, and I'm going to keep uh, recruiting new voices, uh, give them a chance to uh, mentally, uh, well, to mentally speak aloud on the page. And um, am I forgetting something? Ah, yes, poetry lives. We have spoken with Z.M. Wise, author of Take Me Back, Kingswood Clock. He has a forthcoming release called The Wandering Poet, going to be available from Transcendent Zero Press, a Houston-based independent uh, publisher. Uh, thank you, Mr. Z.M. Wise, for speaking with us. We will see you at Austin International Poetry Festival and other venues in Houston, Texas. Thank you. See you there. Poetry lives, guys. Poetry, Poetry lives. lives.